It is very tight though. It's cutting off circulation in my top of my head. How do people in poor videos wear these things? There's a friendly reminder that all the t-shirts on clappedout.com slash store are on sale for $15. Well, almost all of them. Most of them. I have answered a few questions over the years on camshaft sensors and what to use on 2JZ GEs. As these engines came with a distributor, they did not come with a cam sensor up top. So when people retrofit them or use those engines for race car stuff or street car stuff, and they go to an aftermarket standalone ECU, what to use for a camshaft sensor in place of distributor drive. So if you're going coil on plug, whatever the case may be, and you wanna get rid of the distributor and need a camshaft sensor, this is what I did. And this is, in my opinion, one of the most straightforward options. There's other options out there, which we'll discuss. But for this, I'm gonna show you how I made it work. All right, so if you are on a budget and building a 2JZ for your race car, street car, whatever, the majority of people will opt for a 2JZ GE. So the 93 to 95 Lexus SC300s, for example, came with a 2JZ GE non-VVTi. So it does not have variable valve timing, which you would see a solenoid hanging on this side of the head if it did. And it also has a distributor, which you can see this plug is in place of where distributor should go and there's a bolt hole there that is unoccupied so distributor on this side no vvti solenoid on that side this is a 2jz ge long block front to back top to bottom on 2jz gtes for example the cylinder head has a boss that is cast into it that holds a cam sensor and that cam sensor will pick up the uh the a tooth on the actual camshaft and as the camshaft revolves it buzzes by that sensor, the sensor sends a signal to the ECU of camshaft position. This is a GE, again, does not have that camshaft sensor boss in the head, it just had a distributor dri drive on the camshaft itself. So the camshaft itself has a, a gear tooth built into it, cast into it, ground into it, and that's what drives the distributor. Now I did away with all of that, and I had to find a way to get camshaft signal to my ECU. There are a few different ways to do this. I'm gonna go over how I attacked this, and I'm gonna go over a couple other ways you can attack this. Full disclosure, my way is pricier than other options. So I know I started by saying, if you're on a budget, this is what most people do. And I don't wanna check the comments where someone's gonna be like, this dude said, if you're on a budget, then talk about this part. So there's other options. Just chill and watch the whole video or don't. It's up to you, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. So there's a company in Australia, 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 for Australian for beer. God, this video is terrible. There's a company in Australia called Golbies. I think that's how it's pronounced. Go, gole, golebies, golebies. I don't know what that accent was. Back to the main point. Again, the goal here is to get a signal from your camshaft to your ECU. So if you don't have a tooth on the camshaft and a cam sensor in the head, what can you do? One of those options is an external cam sensor, which this is right here. And the kit from Golby's provides a bracket, mounting support, the sensor itself, a lead for the wiring, and the cam gears as well. And the reason you have to have the cam gears is because only one of these bolts is magnetic. So when it passes the pickup, the pickup sends a signal to the ECU. Now, these bolts I replaced before I installed the kit because I had a friend reach out and tell me that from Golby's, the bolts they provide aren't the absolute best for signal and they replaced them and it resolved a couple small issues. However, I have never run their specific bolts, so I can't speak to that. I just changed them before I started to be safe. Also note Pickleless Cage hanging out from Battle Cat Co. Big fan of their stickers. So I mentioned only one of the bolts is magnetic. What I did, was I replaced all of these cam gear bolts with titanium bolts. And once I replaced all of those with titanium bolts, I had to add one that was non-titanium to act as the pickup. So I have four titanium and one steel, mild steel. And if you look, see if I can get a zoom in on this, I placed the sensor, I'm sorry, I placed the cam gear specifically so my pickup is shown crossing over the sensor. So if I zoom out, that's the bracket, I zoom in, that is the bolt as it would pass the sensor. Zoom out, zoom in. If you guys can understand that, because it took me a minute, but that's all it does, is as that passes the sensor, it sends a signal to the ECU. The reason I went with this style kit, 
I used to run signal from my distributor on a B-series setup that I ran in a Honda, my Honda days. The problem that I had with distributor-driven signals was they were dirty and noisy and lousy. So almost always going to an external trigger is gonna provide a cleaner and simpler signal. The other thing is I can easily set depth and how far away the sensor is from the bolt head and I can fine tune that as best as possible. So instead of getting a dirty distributor signal, I got a clean external signal. Another option for cam signal and something that many people do when they're getting their cylinder head machined some places will offer a cam sensor provision in a GE head. So let's say you send your cylinder head out to get ported and polished. They will actually weld a boss into your cylinder head that's already pre-made for a factory uh, OEM 2JZ sensor. So you can do that if you'd like as well. Or if you want to get real creative, you can do it yourself. You can drill, tap, weld on your cylinder head and make it happen. The other option people follow in the same realm, because again, that cam, the camshaft has a tooth that sticks up, and as that cam spins, the cam tooth will pass by that sensor. Another thing people do is they take their valve cover and they will weld a boss to their valve cover and they'll put the sensor in their valve cover. I didn't go that route, I wanted a clean top, so I went ahead and did that. Now people will say, okay, well that kit's X amount of dollars, I don't wanna spend that money, this is a budget build, blah, 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 and I get that. I don't discount that one bit. However, if you're going to build a car on a budget, you better be good at fabricating. You better be good at making your own stuff. I am not good at that stuff at all. I'm terrible at it, so I rely on parts that people have proven to work. However, you can see this is not a complex setup. It's not difficult to understand. It's, it's easy to execute if you can fabricate. So if you don't want to spend the dough on a billet bracket, my recommendation is you make your own or you do it in the cylinder head, but just don't run a distributor. But if you look... It's not, again, not complicated. You have two mounting points. You have one beefy billet bracket. You wanna create something that doesn't have a ton of deflection. Well, no deflection, because you don't want this sensor to move and walk back and forth while it's trying to pick up signal from that cam sensor. You want a clean, sturdy, durable, long-lasting, everlasting gobstopper. I'm trying to think of other adjectives I could use. Sensor mount. You don't wanna do some floppy dingle-dong version of this. One other thing to note about sensor is this is actually, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, this is a VR sensor. I may have said Hall Effect and misspoke, but it's actually a VR sensor. It is a two wire sensor. And if it looks familiar, that's because this specific sensor is actually an OEM 2JZ crankshaft sensor. So the reason I went that route was if I have trouble out of the sensor, the sensor dies, I don't have to spend a ton of money on some aftermarket sensor that costs a million bucks and isn't available in timely fashion, I can call Toyota and I can get one ordered. And if you see, it's probably tough to see, but there's a pigtail down there going to my crank sensor, same exact deal, same sensor. And if you're wondering what this is, that is a timing rod that I just fabbed up real quick. And by fabbed, I mean I, I bent a piece of rod that I used to check static timing when we first got the engine dialed in and locked it to the ECU. So. That is my two cents on camshaft sensors, the easiest, most straightforward way to do it. If you're looking to do this setup, again, you can fabricate your own bracket, you can buy a billet setup, you can weld in the head, the valve cover, wherever, but just make sure you block up your distributor port so you're not spraying oil everywhere. And that is all I have to say about that. Thank you for watching this quick and delicately kind video that comes from the depths of my bowels. Appreciate you guys for watching. Have a blessed day. Happy Halloween also, it's coming up, it should be fun. I'm gonna dress as a racer that is slower than Logan, but Rye won't answer my calls, so I don't know what his daily outfits look like. Probably calf high socks, Vans low shoes. This hat is probably perfect. And then just a chip on my shoulder, constantly mad that Logan's six cylinder beat me in 10 passes. That's probably what it, I got it dialed in.